When you were in Carolina, your neighbor was Michael Jordan. Yes, sir. Mike loves to gamble. Uh, Boo Ray and... Uh, yeah, I don't play Boo Ray. That's you don't play Boo Ray? No, nah, that's right there. That's, that's a relationship killer. <laughs> it got any type of person, you know, you know your constituent on ICAP. It got bringing pistols to the arena. <laughs> All off Boo Ray. Yeah. Ah, now I do some gambling, and I think uh, I learned this uh, this quote around him, uh, Michael Jordan. That is, he was having just a little banter. Somebody asked him, he said, "Hey, how much you want to bet on this?" Simply said by Mike, "Whatever makes you nervous." That's, that's him. I said, Dude, "That's a flex right there." Yeah, but it is what it is. But you ask yourself, why does gambling so prominent with athletes? Because that rush, that, that thrill that, that you get, it's, it's, it's either gambling or you playing a sport. It coincides because the nervousness, the an anxiousness that you kind of get the thrill. It's like, whoo, is he going to make the shot? What's coming next? What's coming next? What card? Is he going to get the card? Am I going to get the card? Oh. There's a lot riding on this. It's a lot of chance, but a lot of probability. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So. Yeah, I learned a lot from 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 MJ. Uh, very positive in 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 who I am today. Always was uh, accessible to knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, just the, who the, what he represents for the culture and what he represents for us today is something that I've always marveled. If Cam Newton never plays another down in the NFL, are you satisfied with your career? Yes, sir. Because I gave everything, everything to this game of football. And in the famous words of Frank Sinatra, you did it your way. I did it my way. From the fashion to the way I presented myself to everything else, I'm satisfied. When you decide, when you officially decide to call it a career, in five years, does Cam Newton, Cam Newton get that call? Does he get that knock on the door and say, welcome to football heaven, which is Canton, Ohio, the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Honestly, though, I wouldn't care. And not to disrespect the Hall of Fame and the people who are in it, my impact was felt. And that's all I wanted. From a kid from College Park, Georgia, by way of Atlanta, to have the impact that I had, where globally, I go anywhere, and people say, man, he look like, uh, man, what's the, uh, the football? That. We played in a masked sport mm -hmm. to be recognized without your helmet on. That tells you something that you did something right. And let this be said, too. I never had an incident with domestic violence. I never had a, 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 a run in with the law. I never had anything conduct detrimental. Mm -hmm. where people would have assumed that, oh, man, he's a head case. Right. That's your personal opinion. Go back and talk to Ron Rivera. Go back and talk to Matt Rue. Go back and talk to Bill Belichick. Talk to Greg uh, Olson. Talk to Thomas Davis. Talk to these people who shared the locker room with me. Rest in peace. Talk to Jerry Richardson. These people will tell you who Cam Newton really is. A lot of people who don't like Cam Newton, it's only subjective to what you may think. And I'm fine with being able to say, I'm not for you. And I think with me being so comfortable in my skin, that's what rubs people the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm, I can get the validation from people around when they appreciate what I've done and that's my nod to them saying, well done. And that's what I can go to sleep at every single night. Whether my daughters or my sons remember me playing football or not, I have the ability to raise them to be honorable kings and queens, the same way that my father and my mother did for me and my grandmother. Last thing, the, the car accident when you was in Carolina. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Do you remember that morning? Yeah. I, uh, I do. Um, it was on an off day. It was, it was, uh, we had victory Monday and 
at the truck that I was driving was, was elevated. elevated, like hot, too, too hot. <laughs> but, it, you know, young and like I wanted to stand out. I, I, that was me being around the Texas, me around the Alabama, like them country boys mm-hmm. had them mm-hmm. uh, elevated trucks mm-hmm. and, I, and I wanted to get one. And the intersection that it was at, I remember the car coming out, then it stopped, then I stopped or slowed down, then I sped up and he sped up too. I remember, I thought I passed him and I was trying to blow the horn like Wah! And as I'm blowing the horn, he clipped my back left wheel and it flipped over. And as I'm flipping, I'm saying to myself, oh my God, not like this, not like this. And I was on the phone with my mom. Not like this. No, no, not like this. Not like this. And when I got out, I didn't realize how close off the edge of the bridge it was. Right. So when they say I had a a, a, a praying grandmother, a praying mother, man, it, 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 that could have been it. You don't know the time, the hour, or the day. So don't let smoking a cigar derail you from understanding that I'm a man of God, God fearing. I know where my favor come from. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by the fact that God has given me the opportunity to say that I owe my life to him. Mm-hmm. I don't fear nothing outside of God. And that day was a perfect example of I was on top of the world. My father would always say, son, be careful. One day you could be on top of the world, and the next day the world can be on top of you. Do right by people. Mm. And no matter what you say about Cam Newton, you can never find a person that I did wrong. And that's what resonates to me the most. Because there's times in my life, similar to that car accident, where I ain't supposed to be here. They thought after... Florida, they'll never hear from me again. It was so many transfers that left. Right. And you never, never heard from them never again. Never heard from them. But when I came back, then my story and my and my and everything that I went through, why me? I would always ask myself, man, how I'm always getting caught. Man, oh son, you ain't regular. These are conversations. This is a perfect father-son story. Mm-hmm. Man, I was afraid of my dad. The only thing that brought us closer was me in JUCO while I was in Florida. I mean, I didn't call my dad, man. I'm going to cut your phone off. <laughs> you better answer. <laughs> I, 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 that was the first time I was out. I was a bird. I mean, I was gone. Yeah. Man, you could bring girls in the dorms and ain't nobody got curfew. Oh, man. But that wasn't the calling that I had. Right. It was, that's why I'm able to resonate with my kids and say, son, it's all right. Tell me, like, what's going on? It may be tough loving, but all medicine ain't sweet either. Right. So as I'm living these, these situations and I'm saying to myself, and let me be the example of hope. So I can't stop going out to 707. Right. I can't stop speaking my mind because every time I want to, there's a person that I'm giving hope to that I may not ever meet. But they are able to say, man, Cam, I resonate with Cam. He my kind. And that's not a black thing. That's not a white thing. That's an all mankind thing. I like him. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.